This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So, California bar exam results for the February yes. test are out. California bar exam usually has a low pass rate, right? Yes. Guess what it is this time? Uh, 47%. Ooh, not even close. So much lower. Oh, lower? Oh my goodness. Uh, 26.8. What? One in four passed. What? 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 It's what? Because they can't do school, I guess. No, because you you have to be done school to do the bar I'm exam. So and this confused. is in February. I'm so okay. So the February bar exam is definitely the off season bar exam. Yeah. Um. So if you started school normally and you're taking the February bar exam, you have a higher statistically speaking like i'm not these are not correlative like so if you you know just because you started at a different semester doesn't mean you're a loser or anything the people who take the bar exam off season definitely have a slightly lower passage rate so i should have accounted for that but um if you find yourself in that circumstance something probably happened along the way uh either you are just such a stellar student that you're taking it a semester early or more, much more likely it took you more than three years to get through law school. You had an extra semester somewhere or something. And so you ended up with, you know, being off a semester. And so you took three and a half years to do it. Me, I took four years to finish law school, but that's because I was part of a night program. And I took, I still took the summer bar exam with everybody else. Um, I, you know, my, my night school class and I we all took it after four years. Um, there was one of our classmates was on a longer track. He was taking five or six years to get through his his law school. Um, other students switched to days to daytime programs so that they could uh, complete their studies faster. I switched to a daytime program in the last year so I could make sure I completed my studies on time. Um, and yeah, so that's really low. Like under the American Bar Association rules, I. Th think they a, a school can't be below a, a 80 percent passage rate 80 percent passage rate without without the american bar association uh, rules kicking in threatening their accreditation they may uh, uh, they may lose their accreditation for having a uh, school uh, any one school with a lower than 80 percent bar passage rate for something like three three tests or three years or something like that now that's that doesn't mean that California, like the state, is going to be disbarred or something. But but that low of a of a score means that some schools students did really poorly, because other schools are trying to keep the eighty percent. So some schools passed eighty percent, and other schools passed probably less than twenty six percent or whatever. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. Now it is the off season, so historically yeah. the off season test results do we are have historical lower. numbers i'm looking through it right now so for this sitting of the exam it was um 1128 people sat and 163 passed so the february 2018 test was the previous historical low which was 27.3 percent oh wow um, so f okay so we want to look at the first time number is the is the better number to look at and so for february of 2018 it was 39.3 percent of first time takers passed that's still oof. that's still really low that is hard to go into a test knowing that the majority of the people are going to fail it like that does not feel you fill you with confidence and hope now the aba approved test takers are for some reason broken down by race let's try not to do that here we go california aba approved test takers okay this is divided by male and female that's not what i want i just want to see who so what we can see here is for the february 2018 exam just to compare we're going to go over to the february 2019 exam 39 point 3% generally passed first time test takers, 45% for California ABA approved law schools. So that's still really, really low. From a psychometrics point of view, I'm really curious why this state is a is an outlier because when I look at other states and their pass rates, yeah. it doesn't really compare. February was actually February 2019 was actually better with a 40.6% general first-time test taker pass rate. 
45% for ABA approved law schools, 47% for out of state ABA approved law schools. It was higher. The pass rate was higher for people who were out of state, who, who, who went to law school out of state and are just taking the California bar exam. Yeah, I had a better could. chance of passing the California bar exam as an out of state test taker than I did as a uh, in state taker if I had taken the California bar. Now, could that be because those are people who are already licensed in other states and are looking to expand their practice into California? No, because it's that's a uh, that's a category here. I think uh, no, it's not in this in this particular one. It's not um, the attorney's examination test takers took. Uh, if you're if you're out of state and you're also a lawyer and I think you have I think the reciprocity rules are five years of practice, uh, then you then you then you have a fifty four point one percent pass rate for a first time California bar exam test taker. If you are a U.S. attorney and you are taking the general bar exam, you are already a U.S. attorney and you take the general bar exam, you have a sixty seven point two percent pass rate. That's a, that's also hard. That if like you've already passed the bar and you already have a practice and you're like you know what. Instead of doing all of these pro hack vice and like maybe I'm going to like add being licensed in California and yeah. you still, there's still a really good chance you're you're going to fail that test. Here's a disparity for you. Uh, in 2018, 52% of white applicants from ABA approved or 53% of white applicants from ABA approved law schools passed and 30% of black applicants and 40% of Hispanic applicants and 36% of Asian applicants. And then a completely different distribution in 2019, 50, nearly 52% of white, 53% of black, a complete change there. 31% uh, of, of Hispanic passed and 42% of Asian applicants passed. Oh, sorry, stats brain just kicked in that when you talk about the the racial minorities that um in in the US like being a lawyer is kind of very white dominated and so the numbers are going to be small and when the numbers are small um one or two people can change the percentage point uh, that's quite true a bit. oh here it is it's on their for on the front page of their website but it's not on their statistics page yet so here we go here is the february 2020 first time test taker for aba approved law schools 42 percent so not terribly far out from the 40 percent in 2018 but repeat test takers from california aba approved law schools down to 30 percent someone i know had to take the bar exam in um in Ontario three times and it was that was rough because he was so yeah. smart and he knew his stuff and I saw him studying for hours and hours and hours he's just taking those tests the anxiety was so high and you know then he got um, help from his doctor and then suddenly oh, okay you pass and it's so weird because it's not I, I don't know in the US if they give you your scores it's but state by in, state some states don't give you your scores uh, some states do yeah, in Ontario, it's just pass fail. So you don't even know if you were close ah, to pass uh, it. So it, it is pass fail in the U.S., but it's pass fail after a score, and you don't mm -hmm. you don't necessarily get to see your score. Nobody else gets yeah. to see your score. I've never had a employer or client ask to see my score. I know my score, and I know how much I passed by, and I know, and it's funny because it I'm I'm. I, who did not pass by many points, um, am still just as much of a lawyer as the person who wanted to, who was our, like our valid, we don't we didn't have a valedictorian, but there was like somebody who was top of the class and that person wanted to try and ace the bar exam and doesn't, doesn't really matter. Like I'm just as much of a lawyer as they are. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure there is a score somewhere, but um, lawyers don't get it. You don't get to know your score after. Well, again, I do know my yeah. score but uh, it's a state by state thing. I think knowing my score would help me if I had failed because then I could understand, did I fail by a little or did I fail by a lot? <laughs> yeah, maybe if you failed, it would help you to know your score so you could you could try to focus on. Uh, and when I took the Pennsylvania bar exam, um, my score came back all broken out. I know what questions I did well on. I nearly aced the corporate forms question, even though I didn't it's feel fun. particularly strong about corporate forms. But it and that has nothing to do with your practice area, or, right? Or passion or anything, right? And I still feel like woefully undereducated on corporate forms, but somehow I nearly aced the question. 
Um, but but if you failed, could, you could imagine you could see like, oh, I did well on the corporate forms question. Okay, maybe don't study so much on corporate forms and maybe go over here and study criminal procedure or something, which I don't remember if I did poorly on criminal procedure, but uh, uh, you know, would be my, that would be my weak area would be, I, I don't practice criminal law. I was never interested in it. And they were the some of the hardest courses to get through because I was just simply not really that interested in criminal law. So yeah, that's 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 really low for the California bar exam, but uh, but not that low compared like when you compare the ABA accredited schools to past performance. That's still woefully under where they should be. So I am I, I I'm not a hundred percent sure what if anybody knows what the exact cause of that is, but it has something to do with California being a very popular state to take the 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 bar exam. Um, it has something to do with the difficulty of the California bar exam and maybe even California law. And maybe it has a little bit to do with the attitudes of the people who are studying, uh, especially when you see that out of, a, out of state statistics are better than the in-state statistics. There's, maybe there's a culture or something. I'm not accusing. I'm, I'm saying what things would make sense. Um, um, California also has the... Oh, what do you call it when you do like an apprenticeship instead of reading for the bar? It's what Kim Kardashian yeah. is doing. And I don't know if you saw some of those statistics, but she's going to have an uphill battle because those reading for the bar statistics, uh, you can see they're really low. Um, people who four year qualification, okay, so is, is, is uh, studying through law school. Uh, it looks like there were fewer than 11 applicants taking the reading reading from the bar bar exam in uh, or qualifying for the bar exam through reading for the bar through a law office apprenticeship in February 2018. So we don't have statistics. Sorry, in February 2019, same thing, fewer than 11 applicants. So we don't have statistics on that. And I mean, it is hard to um, apprenticeship for a, for a test that is designed for people that have gone to law school and... There, it is such a grind to go through law school, and it is so intense. Um, it's difficult for me to imagine sort of that apprenticeship situation being able to mirror that grind in any way. Now, I mean, people still pass. Some people. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not knocking it. I think it should be more yeah. of an option for people. But it's it's only for the intensely serious so that is our show, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is our legal education and legal news channel, Lawful Masses. Support us on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsors.com slash law if you are able. It really helps our channel out and makes it possible to make these videos at all in the first place. Thank you very much to our $50 plus supporters in the month of May. I love how long this list is. Joe Tyson, Wes Delge, Nicely Done Defense, Video Remonetized, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Spirit Bear, Yonda Gray, Michael Pierce, Daniel Perez, Blackleaf, Benjamin Hightoff, Stephen Otta, Cute Grills in Your Area, Longreach Jones, Zachary Cheney, Mullen PC, Ugly Grill, Shiloh T, Josh Baker, Gregory, and Rudolph Bescherer Jr. And the $5 plus supporters are scrolling on the LED matrix panel next to me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. I will see you in the videos that drop. I love you all. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We're going to get out of this whole thing together safely. Bye. I am running for you. I am running.